Hi, good evening, everyone. Hi, good evening everyone. So I welcome you all to One Academy. <clears throat> so let us start with the series and welcome you to the golden pearls of surgery. So before that, do enjoy An Academy with the iconic subscription where you get An Academy and Proplatter and we have a lot of, you can say a lot of uh, things which are going on in An Academy for your preparation. So do make use of them. So we have a lot of new batches also starting. So let us start without wasting the time so diagnosis diagnosis and management so what do you what do you see in this image a patient with a long standing thyroid nodule with sudden toxicity following is the imaging on thyroid scan okay so what do you think it is? What do you think it is? A long standing thyroid nodule with sudden toxicity. Okay. So on thyroid scan, you get to see this kind of profile. That means this is a solitary, solitary hot nodule. So solitary hot nodule on what background on cold background so if we have a solitary hot nodule on a cold background that means we are dealing with what toxic adenoma so this is a case of toxic adenoma so students let us talk something about this toxic adenoma its management and everything so with this flashcard let us study the topic of hyperthyroidism and toxic adenoma so when we talk about this let's talk about okay <clears throat> let us talk about the concept of toxic adenoma it's a very simple and easy concept toxic adenoma the classic keyword which will help you identify that it is a case of toxic adenoma is good evening good evening puja okay <clears throat> the keyword is long standing long standing solitary thyroid nodule so long standing solitary thyroid nodule with sudden onset of toxicity so the classical history if we see of a patient is a long standing sudden uh, long standing solitary thyroid nodule plus sudden onset sudden onset toxicity one more very important thing that we all have to understand is with the young the profile of the patient is young female young female and the average size of the nodule before which it attains the toxic profile is more than 3 cm so but see generally when you get so these are the key words in the question so the key words that you look for in the question is sudden on onset toxicity young female with a large nodule and there's a long standing history. Do you know what is the concept? Why the nodule becomes autonomous? The concept is that it is based on the GSP mutation. GSP mutation. Now, what do you mean by GSP mutation? What do you mean by GSP mutation? It's very, 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 very simple. This is G coupled protein. This is G coupled protein. So we have a protein which is known as G coupled protein and we have a protein which is still going to stimulate this protein also. So G coupled stimulatory protein. So there is a protein 
which is G coupled stimulatory protein and this protein is mutated. So do you know what happens in this case? In this case because of the mutation of this, because of the mutation of this, what will happen? Just a minute. Okay. Because of this, what will happen students? There will be, there will be gain of function. So this is a gain of function mutation and because of the gain of function, there is uncontrolled activity of this. So there is uncontrolled production of thyroid from this. Now this is very important to understand why because you have to see that this nodule is abnormal and not the gland. The gland on the other hand is suppressed. So when you talk about the treatment, what is the treatment? The preferred treatment is hemithyroidectomy. The preferred treatment is hemithyroidectomy. For smaller nodules, for smaller nodules, you can also go for, for smaller nodules, you can also go for one very important thing that is radioactive iodine ablation. One more thing that you can go for so smaller nodule is PEG. What is PEG? What is PEG? This is polyethylene glycol injection. So PEG stands for polyethylene, polyethylene glycol injection. So this is what is the very simple way of addressing this question. So I hope this question is clear to everyone. This is a question of toxic adenoma. Let us also see the different types of profile of hyperthyroidism which we see on thyroid scan. Now if we talk about thyroid scan, if we talk about thyroid scan, remember thyroid scan in hyperthyroidism is optional. This is not a routine investigation, it's an optional investigation. Why? This is indicated only if there is a doubt. Yeah? And functionally active tissue will always uptake it. So it's an optional investigation, it's not a routine investigation. Only if in a case of hyperthyroidism, your plan is not to do a total thyroidectomy, then only you will go for. Otherwise, there is no logic of unnecessarily exposing the body, exposing the body to radioactive agents. So functionally active tissue will take up. So Bacho, imagine you have a patient with hypo, hyperthyroidism and you give technetium 99 or maybe iodine 1 to 1. Uh, sorry, iodine 1, 2, 3. What will happen if you get a classical profile like this? What is a profile like this? There is homogeneous uptake, the homogeneous uniform uptake. Now, this is very, very, very important. So, uniform uptake of the gland. So, diffusely hot gland. So, if there is a diffusely hot gland, what is going to happen in this case? Diffusely hot gland. So this is what is known as Graves disease. Graves disease. Why? If you see, this is what is diffuse, <coughs> toxic. Yeah, this is a this is a Graves disease. If it is a diffusely toxic gland. Next is similar profile of a patient with a multiple nodules. Yeah, multiple nodules. And if you give a radioactive agent to them, if a, if you give a radioactive agent to them, and you get a profile like this. What is this kind of profile? You can say multiple hot nodules. So on technetium 99 or iodine 1, 2, 3, you get a profile like this. So you can say multiple hot nodules, multiple hot nodules on what background? On cold background. On cold background. Thyroidectomy, most common nerve injury, most common nerve injury is actually <coughs> Superior thyroid is, there are some literatures which say superior thyroid, there are some literatures which say recurrent laryngeal nerve injury. Let me tell you why the more feasible answer nowadays should be superior thyroid, superior, uh, recurrent, there is always, why there is, uh, you can say a dictum that superior thyroid, because many a times superior thyroid, we are careless about it. But yes, still, 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 majority of the books consider recurrent laryngeal nerve injury only. There is a logic that people are more concerned about recurrent laryngeal and less concerned about the superior laryngeal nerve. Yeah. But still recurrent laryngeal is the most common nerve injury crash. Anyways, so on a cold background you get to see multiple hot nodules. So what we will see? 
what is this this is tox this is this is toxic mng this is toxic mng which is also known as plumbers disease this is also known as plumbers disease plumbers disease is that clear or no and next i have told you let us come back to this flash card and let us discuss this identify the principle shown in the image identify the principle shown in the image actually we have a boom and we have the suture so what should be the ideal suture is to wound length what should be ideal suture is to wound length let us see always remember if the length of the wound if the length of wound is x the suture should be 4x the suture should be 4x very good very good jisha very good question and this is what is known as a gelling suture this is what is known as gelling suture is that clear no now try to understand <clears throat> one more thing so if you have 4 cm wound 16 cm suture is required to suture that what should be the gap between the two sutures what should be the gap between gap between two sutures answer is it should not be 2x as it is written it is x where x is defined as where x is defined as the thickness so if this is the thickness if x is the thickness the two sutures should be x cm apart like if you have the thickness of tissue as 1 cm all the bites should be 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 cm apart are you getting this point or not yes next is next is what should be the distance what should be the distance in between the two what should be the distance in between the two bites so in between the two bites on either side we have a gap of x from the midline so 2x so distance distance between distance between two bites it should be 2x 2x or x from midline so x from midline or 2x next very important fact here yeah. let us see so when we are ligating when we are doing suturing so on one side days of suture removal so days of suture removal this is again very 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 important so if we have scalp 3 to 5 days face before that 2 to 3 days yeah then abdomen 7 to 10 days groin 7 days so abdomen groin 7 days what else what else then we have then we have thorax thorax we have 10 to 14 days 10 to 14 days extremities extremities yeah 14 days burst abdomen so for burst abdomen so we place what sutures retention sutures retention sutures how many days students how many days answer is 2 to 3 weeks 2 to 3 weeks now just tell me one more thing on sutures only i am asking what is a tram track effect what is a tram track effect what is a tram track effect so when we are talking about suture what is a tram track effect like just see this suture line if you don't remove the suture what will happen there will be excess granulation tissue formation excess granulation tissue formation yeah so that is what is known as tram track so what is a tram track effect excess excess granulation tissue granulation tissue formation tissue formation over over the suture line and why this happens why this happens anyone because of the delayed suture removal and why this happens because of delayed delayed suture removal this is very 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 important delayed suture removal so suture should be removed at a what at a proper time then what is the cheese wire effect what is a cheese wire effect 
students if you want to if you want to cut a block of cheese yeah if you want to cut a block of cheese what we used to do or what we do there's a special device yeah there's a special device which is having which is a wire which is a wire and what is so special about this wire you'll pass this wire through the through the you can say you'll pass this wire through the block of cheese and what what will happen so this is a handle there's a handle and you will hold it you will hold it and you will pull it towards yourself so the moment you pull it towards yourself along the direction along the direction of this the cheese will be bisected so this is what is known as cheese wire effect so this is what is known as a cheese wire effect are you getting this so when you when will you see this same thing in suturing yeah this is the cut through this is the cut through of the sutures so cut through of sutures on excessive on excessive strain on excessive strain of suturing of suture this is what is known as a cheese wire effect are these things clear so let us move forward and discuss something else what is the seep of this lesion what is the seep of this lesion so in front of you you see a lesion and this is an ulcer over the what gaiter's zone so basically this is a healing or a healed or non healing ulcer it's a non healing ulcer so what is it what is a what is this this is a non healing ulcer this is a non healing ulcer and what is it what is it what are you see this is a c6 <coughs> c6 the c6 let us talk about the c acha one more thing there is important it is in these wounds that there is increased risk of scc scc puja it should be d na but it should be d in this case answer should be d and what is that known as that is known as marzolins ulcer marzolins ulcer let us try to understand this concept let us try to understand this concept what is seep seep is a grading system this is a grading system for chronic grading system for chronic venous insufficiency insufficiency yeah let us try to understand so when we talk about the seep classification c stands for clinical so clinical appearance of the wound or clinical appearance of the or clinical presentation of this venous insufficiency let us see so c1 includes both the spider wings the spider wing or telangiectasia spider wing or telangiectasia <coughs> c1 also includes the reticular veins reticular vein then we have c2 c2 what is c2 students it is varicose vein varicose vein always remember if the varicose veins are asymptomatic it is c2a if the varicose veins are symptomatic it is c2s need pg 2021 they have given a picture they have given an image where there was a dilated vein nothing else was given and they have given option c2a c2b c2c c2d so this is c2a we have c2s and then we have c2r what do you mean by r if it is recurrence then what is c3 it is edema this is edema what is c4 it is 4a is pigmentation 4a is pigmentation 4b what is 4b it is lipodermatosclerosis lipodermatosclerosis 4c is dermal flare dermal flare or you can say this is also known as corona flebectasia corona flebectasia what else c5 is a healed ulcer it's a healed ulcer 
and C6 is a non-healing ulcer. Nowadays, it has become a ritual like GCH. Every exam is having a question. So non-healed ulcer. But this is only the C part. So if in this question I have asked only the C part, let us see what is what do we mean by E also? So E stands for etiology. E stands for etiology. Now it could be E C that means congenital. Congenital. E P that means primary. What do you mean by primary? Not by birth, but no associated cause. Then we have E S that is secondary. That is secondary. So E C E P E S. Then we have A. A stands for anatomy. So when we talk about anatomy, what are the important places where this can happen? Yeah. So we have A S. What is A S? Superficial venous system. Superficial venous system. Then we have AD, that is deep venous system, deep venous system, yeah. And then we have AP, what is that? It's a perforator, perforator insufficiency. So perforator insufficiency. Students, we also have P. How to see this P? Pathophysiology. So P stands for pathophysiology. What is that? We have PO that is obstruction, PO is obstruction, PR is reflux. So PO is obstruction, PR is reflux. <coughs> Let us try to understand this. Let us try. So C, E, A, P. This is all that we have to understand. Now, let us see one question and you have to answer. So I'll ask you one question. Then I'll ask complete C. So question is, the question is 26 year old labor presents with, presents with dilated vein. I'm giving you a question. So he presents with dilated vein, dilated vein along the left leg. He has a history of DVT three years back. On careful examination, on careful examination, pigmentation, pigmentation, an ulcer, an ulcer was found, was found above medial malleolus. Try to understand this question. Next is on Doppler, on Doppler, ecogenic, ecogenic debris, ecogenic debris located in left popliteal, left popliteal vein. Tell me what is the seep for this patient? Come on. This is a very good question. Tell me what is the seep for this patient? <coughs> now, what are the piece of information that you will be looking for? Presence with dilated vein. What's a dilated vein? If you have at least if it is visible with naked eye and cosmetically unacceptable, that has brought it to the into the notice. That is C2. Yeah. He has history of DVT three years back. No, no, give me complete C. Not the way the examiners, oh, you have you get an MCQ. No, give me complete C. He has a history of DVT how many years back? Three years back. So probably etiology is secondary to DVT. Yeah. On careful examination, there is pigmentation also. That means C4A. And Ulcer was found above the medial malleolus. So this is C6 also. Are you getting this? On Doppler, ecogenic debris. Debris means what? Debris means, if you talk about pathophysiology, pathophysiology, debris means obstruction. 
Are you getting this or no? And where in the left popliteal vein? Left popliteal vein means what? Deep venous system. Deep venous system. So if you see, we have C2 plus 4A plus 6. Etiology is secondary to DVT. Anatomy is the deep venous system. Pathophysiology is obstruction. So this is the complete C that we have for this patient. This is the complete C. Is this clear to everyone or any doubt in this? Tell me. Is it clear to everyone or you people are having a doubt? Ask me if you have a doubt. Clear? Clear? Shall I move forward now? Okay. <coughs> Next is. Okay. This is again a wonderful question. You can simply by seeing the image, you can tell everything. Yeah. Barium meal image for a patient with intermittent chest pain, dysphagia and regurgitation. Yeah. What do you see here? A barium, let us see the points. A barium is showing you this is the esophagus. This is actually the left, uh, this is the, you can say, itis or you can say the indentation of the crust. Yeah. This is here, we are having the crust. Yeah. This is the stomach. And, and, and what is this? Some part is going up. Some part is going up. Puja, it should be written totally. It should always be written total. Whatever you are getting should be mentioned. Okay. So let us try to understand that means this is something which is going up via the hiatus. So something going up via the hiatus and this is what is a case of hiatal hernia or hiatus hernia. So hiatal hernia or hiatus hernia or better to say or use a word paraesophageal hernia paraesophageal hernia are you getting this or no so important fact is that the g junction the g junction is intact in this case so g junction is intact in this case yeah. are we supposed to give the highest nahi 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 bache puja it is not Actually, what has happened, all those non-surgeons, they have started to teach. See, I have seen a lot of people revising surgery, lot of people teaching surgery. Kuch nahi pata, ABCD about blood and how to control hemostasis. They are teaching this. They have mugged up sheep and they are telling you, give the highest value. But see, the idea, the ideology behind sheep is to represent the patient case. That whenever you see this written, like imagine this is written, C2 plus 4A, you come to know, very close bhi hai, ulcer bhi hai pigmentation here. Why this is important? Because you need to advise the stocking also but carefully notice that since there is an ulcer you have to go for a Bisgard's regimen, multi-layered compression and since there is pigmentation you need to add pentoxyphylin also. Etiology is secondary and hence you should be knowing that there is a obstructive profile. So you start with plexin, yeah, low molecular weight heparin. And since it's a pathology of deep venous system, you should tell patient it can happen again because it's an obstructive pathology. So the plan of action, the management, everything depends upon this. So don't, please don't write the highest value. If it is as in MCQ, that's okay. But this is the way you have to represent anyways. So when we talk about this is paraesophageal hernia. So this is what? This is a type. This is a type 2. This is a type 2 PEH. That is what hernia? This is a rolling hernia. Rolling hernia. Are you getting this? Let us read in the question. The barium meal for a patient with intermittent chest pain, dysphagia and regurgitation. So an obstructive profile is also there for this patient. Now, the next topic for discussion today is paraesophageal hernia. It's a wonderful topic. PEH. Paraesophageal hernia. 
what are the types of paraesophageal hernia what are the types of the paraesophageal hernia there are four types type 1 this is what is known as sliding hernia this is what is known as sliding hernia what is sliding hernia what is sliding hernia all about come on what is sliding hernia this is herniation of or you can say upward upward shift of g junction of g junction into mediastinum simple this is what bachche this is the most common type and do you know the fact the irony is that it is not a true peh so it is not a true peh why because nothing is going out via hiatus <coughs> in a true sense it is not a peh because it is not going out through the hiatus basically and secondly it is a g junction which is equal part of esophagus and stomach how can one's own part herniate into oneself so bachche it is upward sliding of the g junction into the mediastinum however this is considered as a hernia because something is moving via that cavity this opening of that cavity but actually this is not the hiatus so it is not a true peh bachche since the g junction moves up the main concern here is the reflux so this is associated with this is associated with reflux so this is associated with reflux the next very important thing so this is one sliding hernia then type 2 type 2 is this is a least common least common so this is rolling hernia rolling hernia do you know this is a true peh this is a true peh why it is a true peh because this is defined as herniation herniation of fundus or other parts of stomach so other parts of stomach via the hiatus do you know the g junction is intact the g junction is intact you know this is the right cross of the diaphragm this is the left crust of the diaphragm yeah this is the right diaphragm that you have here yeah? and this is the left diaphragm so basically this is the hiatus this opening is the hiatus through which it has gone up yeah this is grown so the g junction important is g junction is intact and the fundus has or the body also has gone up now this is associated with obstructive features this is associated with obstructive features then we have type c or type 3 type 3 students is a mixed type it is a mixed type what do you mean by mix it's a combination it's a combination of sliding plus rolling so combination of sliding hernia and along with the sliding you have a rolling hernia also so sliding plus rolling hernia if you see what happens the herniation the herniation of g junction into mediastinum into mediastinum along with that along with that plus the stomach via hiatus this is what is type 3 do you know it is associated with features of reflux features of reflux and not only features of reflux plus also obstruction the next thing is it is also associated with gastric volvulus an important question is what kind of gastric volvulus can you expect here what kind of gastric volvulus can you expect here organoaxial or mesenteroaxial yeah we have organoaxial so organoaxial organoaxial gastric volvulus this is common here volvulus is common here. are you getting this abu then we have type 4 then we have type 4 what is type 4 type 4 this is herniation 
herniation. Okay, I, I, I've not drawn this image. So this is something like this. This is something like this. So if you see, if you see, the concept is like this. The G junction has gone up and also the stomach has gone up. Yeah. The next is, the next is type 4. What is type 4? Herniation of any viscous other than, other than stomach. So other than stomach, any viscous via hiatus. This is what is type 4. So if you see the G junction and the stomach are intact in their location and this is the hiatus that you are having and from this hiatus something is going maybe you can say the transverse colon can go up yeah you can say <coughs> the jejunum can go up anything this is what is type 4 now next is what is the investigation of choice what is the investigation of choice answer is a barium barium study so barium study is the investigation of choice one very important thing important is important is sliding hernia sliding hernia may be missed may be missed on barium may be missed on barium why why can anyone tell me why but see this is very simple try to understand this is what is sliding hernia imagine this is sliding hernia yeah, this is sliding hernia this is the diaphragm okay this is something like this the moment you take barium the moment the moment you take barium so how will you take barium you have to swallow the barium yeah so barium swallow and this will initiate what peristalsis and when the peristalsis happens do you know due to active peristalsis this might slide down yeah due to active peristalsis due to active peristalsis this might slide down is that clear or no so you know peristalsis is happening so when you do a barium you might find it down and that is why it is missed are you getting this so what to do in that case therefore upper gi endoscopy with retroflexion view retroflexion view this is actually confirmatory confirmatory for for sliding hernia do you know sliding hernia is actually a type 4 type 4 orientation of gastric flap so there is a classification hills classification and in hills classification what you do you actually go down with and you flex the endoscope now normally if you see that endoscope there are two wheels one is a big wheel one is a small wheel when you turn the big wheel the 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 endoscope will turn and manipulate in a j so anteriorly and posteriorly so if you do it like this anteriorly if you do it like this posteriorly and small wheel is for right and left right and left orientation right and left orientation so but when you flex it when you flex it you are looking actually towards the roof and there you will see a gap normally if it is an intact if it is intact g junction there will be no gap in the at the level of g junction it will tightly hold tightly hold this endoscope if there is a hernia what kind of profile you will get you will get a this kind of loose profile with the g junction going up this is the classical so upper g endoscopy with retroflexion view is mandatory to confirm what a sliding hernia are you getting this or no sliding hernia baki har jagah barium at your level, apne level pe, ek baat yaad rakhna, barium answer mark karta. Aapko bhi barely in love says, CT scan, there are teachers teaching, which wo zamana chala gaya, the phase is out, when barely was considered as a gold standard book. Today, we don't follow barely as a standard reference anywhere around the planet, except in UK. We follow Sabiston, Schwartz, Chodo, GIT mein, Shacklefort, Mainko, Hepatobiliary, we follow Bloomgard. Kahi bhi nahi likha hai, they have clearly written, they have clearly written. I'll share with you one reference also. Let me take you to a book. Uh, let me take you to a book and share with you the reference. This is abdominal. This is Mango 12th edition up to 13th edition. I, I'll show that 13th edition also is there. So let me take you to the chapter of uh, let me take you to the chapter of esophagus. 
एंड दिस इज द चैप्टर ऑफ पैरा इसोफेजल हर्निया अब देखना यहाँ पर पैरा इसोफेजल हर्निया एंड विल गो टू द इमेजिंग स्टडीज या कैन यू सी आई मार्क फॉर समथिंग फॉर यू ऑल्सो यू हैव टू रीड यू विल रीड दिस इसको पढ़ना शल मार्क इट फॉर यू द अपर जी आई बेरियम सोलो चल नॉट विद दिस अंडरलाइन इट सो द अपर जी आई the upper gi barium solo is essential part of workup for these patients and gives the most accurate information most accurate information regarding the hernia's anatomy point number 1 and the position also it will give you a basic idea about the g junction and its location also it may give you some information about the functional status about the esophageal peristalsis though it is not the best however yes ct scan ct scan is not typically used in workup of peh ab ct scan ka kya masla hai ct scan is utilized whenever you are evaluating a congenital defect and hence diaphragmatic hernias so defect of morgagni here bogdelix hernia wahan par congenital and also to <coughs> evaluate the type of contents in type 4 hiatal hernia samjhe ki nahi So, कभी भी आपसे कोई ये समझाता मिले आपको मामू बनाता मिले समवन सेइंग दिस इज टू बिली दिस इज बिलियन लव उससे कहते हैं डॉक्टर साहब एरा हैज चेंज एरा हैज चेंज इन 1950s अप टू 1990 वी यूज्ड टू बिली रीड बिलियन लव आजकल कौन हॉस्पिटल में कौन मेडिकल कॉलेज में बिलियन लव पढ़ता है या पढ़ाता है समझे कि नहीं सो so, समझदार बनो द सेकंड थिंग इज हाउ विल यू कंफर्म कॉमन फाइंडिंग्स ऑन चेस्ट फिल्म इंक्लूड्स सो चेस्ट एक्सरे इफ यू गो फॉर you get to see a retrocardiac air fluid shadow so this is heart this is heart and since the stomach is behind that yeah so heart is in the middle mediastinum esophagus is in the posterior mediastinum if anything herniates it will herniate into the posterior mediastinum so retrocardiac air fluid level and coiling of rails tube if you try to or attempt to insert in the in the mediastinum this is what so on chest x ray on chest x ray this is very 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 important on chest x ray you get to see retrocardiac are you getting these things or no so retrocardiac air fluid level air fluid level so retrocardiac air fluid level and along with that plus minus coiling of coiling of rails tube in mediastinum okay let us move forward students what is the utility of what what is the utility of ct or mri so ct or mri this is useful for this is useful for congenital diaphragmatic hernias congenital diaphragmatic hernias or type 4 hernias type 4 hernias is that clear to everyone or no let us quickly discuss when we have discussed so much let us discuss the treatment but say you know the treatment the first is reduction of content reduction of content but say second thing is so we have reduced the content point number 1 the second is this is the diaphragm okay just see this is the diaphragm and this is the hiatus okay so this is the diaphragm and this is the hiatus and you know from this you are getting these are the right crust of diaphragm and here you are having the left crust of the diaphragm you are having the left crust but see in order to ensure that hernia doesn't happen again i need to i need to reduce the space of no why because crural approximation will reduce the risk of what sliding hernia so iske baad main sabse pehle kya karunga crural approximation so crural approximation or you can say crural repair so crural repair decreases risk of sliding hernia risk of sliding hernia the next is what i'll do to reduce the hiatus actually the true hiatus hernia so for that for that i will apply a ptfe mesh so there is there are ptfe mesh that i that we have so we put a ptfe mesh and you can take a continuous bite also continuous bursting suturing also you can do yeah you can take a bursting suturing and reduce the defect so this is mesh repair mesh repair are you getting this or no 
but when you have done some manipulation at the level so what what mesh are you using ptfe ptfe you can use a goretex goretex mesh ye trade name hai ye trade name hai goretex patch basically we say but when you are doing anything at the level of g junction definitely you will have a risk of what risk of reflux so after this you will also do a partial fund duplication so partial fund duplication what is we have door which we actually prefer anterior 180 in this case we can go for two pay also two pay also but we prefer to go for door so two pay this is posterior 180 posterior 180 to 270 abhi bachcha kaise doc sir ye kya hota hai ye kya hota hai you will pick up the pick up the what the fundus and you will do this so what is this this is what is a door this is a door but see what is the aim of door fund duplication the aim of door fund duplication is to recreate the aim is to recreate s shape s shape gastric flap s shape gastric flap ab ye s dikh raha hai aapko nahi dikh raha doc sir nahi dikh raha doc sir okay just see can you see a classical s s shape gastric flap this is what is so this is the complete management of para esophageal hernia is this clear to everyone or no tell me is this clear to everyone okay so i think this is sufficient for today and we meet tomorrow so if you enjoyed the class if you like the class do join the plus and use the code surgery life use the code surgery life you can also use the code dr dikshit and we meet tomorrow at same time with more interesting cases do follow me on an academy if you have still not so that you don't miss notification of my classes just go to the icon and then follow me so till then bye 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 bye